Now, let me give you a quick overview of the structures that make up the anatomy of the eye. So in the front of the eye, we have this clear curved structure known as the cornea. As light passes through the cornea, it is bent and the light is focused through the pupil or this opening in the iris. So the area surrounding the pupil is known as the iris and it contains smooth muscles to alter the diameter of the pupil. The light will then travel through the lens and the lens's job is to help find focus the light. So for example, if you're looking at something closer up, the lens becomes more spherical to bend that light even more. The lens is connected to this tissue that surrounds the front of the eye called the ciliary body. The ciliary body contains smooth muscles that help to change the shape of the lens whenever it contracts or relaxes. The lens is attached to the ciliary body by suspensory ligaments. Exiting the back of each eyeball is what is called the optic nerve. And the optic nerve contains many axons that are transmitting nerve signals from the retina to the brain. Now let's look at the three major layers that surround the eyeball. So starting from the edge of the cornea, going all the way around the eye and even over the optic nerve is called the sclera. This is a very thick connective tissue layer. Below the sclera, we have what we call the choroid, and this is a pigmented layer. And then we have the innermost layer, and that is the retina. The retina contains photoreceptors and neurons that are important in absorbing light and then sending nerve signals down the optic nerve to the brain. Now I'm going to be writing down some important notes about the retina, so feel free to take some notes along with me as well as draw out some diagrams with me. The retina is the sensory structure for vision. It is the innermost layer surrounding the eye and is composed of several cell layers. Now what I'm gonna do is list the cell layers of the retina from most superior to deep, and at the same time, I'm gonna draw out a diagram representing these cell layers. The most superficial layer of the retina is called the pigmented epithelium. It's a single layer of cells attached to the choroid. Remember, the outermost layer surrounding the eye is the sclera. Then we have the choroid layer. The choroid is a pigmented layer, so I'm going to color it in. Attached to the choroid layer is the retina. And remember, I said the most superficial layer of the retina is the pigmented epithelium. The pigmented epithelium is a single layer of pigmented cells. One major function of the pigmented epithelium is to support the photoreceptor cells. And the second major function of the pigmented epithelium is to prevent light from scattering within the eye. Therefore, it does this by absorbing any light that was not absorbed by the photoreceptor cells. Adjacent to the pigmented epithelium is what we call the neurosensory layer. The neurosensory layer is composed of three major cell types. 
The first major cell type is the photoreceptor cells. This includes the cones and the rods. So let's look at where the photoreceptor cells are located in our diagram. So again, remember we have both rods and cones and they're named based on the shape of their outer segment. The rods and cones are embedded in the pigmented epithelial layer. Photoreceptor cells are considered the sensory receptor cells for vision because they contain pigments that absorb light and then these cells release chemicals that communicate with sensory neurons. So as I stated, there are two major types of photoreceptor cells, and those are cones and rods. So let me list some of the important differences between cones and rods. First off, cones are only used for color vision, but they're only activated when there is a lot of light. Therefore, your cones do not work whenever there is a limited amount of light in the environment. The second major function of cones is that they provide a high level of visual acuity, or in other words, visual sharpness. Now rods, on the other hand, lack color vision, and they're only activated when there's low levels of light, such as at nighttime. In addition, rods provide low levels of visual acuity, but they are better at detecting motion. As I stated, photoreceptors release chemicals that communicate with sensory neurons. So I'm going to use little red dots to represent these chemicals that are being released by the photoreceptors. These neurons that the photoreceptors are communicating with are called bipolar cells. These are the dendrites of the bipolar cells. And here's their cell body. Bipolar cells are considered the first sensory neurons in the sensory projection pathway for vision. Bipolar cells therefore transmit signals between the photoreceptors and cells called the ganglion cells. Ganglion cells are the second sensory neurons in the sensory projection pathway for vision. So they are the third cell layer of the neurosensory layer of the retina. Ganglion cells are important because they receive signals from the bipolar cells and then they transmit signals to the brain.
One important thing to note about the ganglion cells is that their axons are very long and they actually form the optic nerve and exit the back of the eye. Now let's add the ganglion cells to our drawing of the retina. Now remember their axons are really long and exit the back of the eye. So we're gonna draw really long axons that are going to form the optic nerve. So here you can see where all the axons from the ganglion cells merge together to form the optic nerve. This signal is going to be sent to the brain. And again, the bipolar cells are communicating with the ganglion cells here. And they do that by secreting neurotransmitters. The red arrows that I'm gonna draw in now are representing the direction that the nerve signals are traveling. So once again, you can see that the retina is composed of the pigmented epithelium and what we call the neurosensory layer. The neurosensory layer is composed of the photoreceptors, bipolar cells, and ganglion cells. Now, one important thing to note is that the ganglion cells and the bipolar cells are transparent. And this is important because light is going to be moving in this direction. It's going to be entering the eyes and then it has to travel through the ganglion cells, through the bipolar cells before it can be absorbed by the photoreceptor cells. And any light that is not absorbed by the photoreceptor cells will be absorbed by the pigmented epithelium or by the choroid. And that's important because the pigmented epithelium and choroid prevent that light from then scattering throughout the eye. If that light scattered throughout the eye, then that would lower your visual acuity. One other thing that I just wanna mention is that there are two regulatory neurons that are also found in the neurosensory layers. These are called the horizontal cells and amacrine cells. The horizontal cells and amacrine cells help to modify the communication between the photoreceptors, bipolar cells, and ganglion cells. The horizontal cells and amacrine cells help to increase our detection of visual patterns they improve contrast, and they help to either increase or decrease the sensitivity of the rod cells. Now, the last drawing I did was very detailed, and let's do a really simplified drawing here to summarize everything that I covered. So again, as we can see here, the outermost layer surrounding the eye is called the sclera. Then inside the sclera, we have the choroid, and then we have the retina. The retina consists of the pigmented epithelium, photoreceptors, bipolar cells, and ganglion cells. The photoreceptor cells are responsible for absorbing light. So light's going to enter the eye and be absorbed by the photoreceptor cells. Any light that is not absorbed by the photoreceptor cells and therefore makes its way past the photoreceptor cells will be absorbed by the pigmented epithelium or the choroid so that it doesn't bounce around and be deflected throughout the eye. Now remember, the photoreceptors will release chemicals that communicate with the bipolar cells. The bipolar cells will release chemicals that then communicate with the ganglion cells and then the ganglion cells will send a nerve signal down their long axons 
that form the optic nerve and send nerve signals to the brain. One important thing that you should notice in this diagram, as well as the other one that I drew, is that where the optic nerve exits the back of the eye, there's no photoreceptors. And that is why we call this area right here the blind spot. It is also known as the optic disc. You can also see this in this diagram that we drew before, and that is that this region right here would be called the optic disc, also known again as the blind spot because it lacks photoreceptors. Now let's use everything that you've learned to quickly label this microscope image showing the layers of the eye. This image is oriented so that this is the back of the eye and the layers over here are towards the front of the eye. So here we have the sclera, then we have the choroid, followed by the pigmented epithelium of the retina. Then we have the photoreceptors, the bipolar cells, which are our first sensory neurons, and then the ganglion cells. And here you can see this light area here are the axons of the ganglion cells.